I am Ryan McVeigh, the Vice President of our ECM practice, which is where our portal team falls at ZIA Consulting. And I'm going to spend a few minutes, as Emily said, uh, talk a little bit about what those features are, and then Tim will do the deep dive into those. I'll share just a very brief Fly for Right update and a very brief uh, who are ZIA uh, conversation before Tim dives into the meat and the uh, good technical stuff here. All right, so right, right in. What are the uh, what are the five features that we love about LifeRay? Obviously, uh, we we can read the slides here, right? There the are open architecture, fast site creation, LifeRay plugins, fast theme development, and responsive layouts. Um, if, if you're a LifeRay person, you probably are familiar with some or all of these things. And, and Tim's going to spend some time uh, talking with them or about them in detail and, and why uh, why we're fans. Quick LifeRay update, and, and instead of doing the the normal. Uh, <laughs> What is LifeRay? What's the overview of the product conversation, which, which of course, uh, by now, if you're listening to us, you've heard before. We'll just share a couple of interesting things that uh, may, be, may be new to you with, with regards to LifeRay in the past several months. Um, so most recently, they were named as a leader in Gartner's 2012 Magic Quadrant. Um, so they're in the top right of that picture again. I would highly encourage you to go read the report. Uh, and, and take a look at what Gartner has to say about, about LifeRay. Um, certainly they're very proud of that accomplishment and, and they should be as well earned. Um, LifeRay has launched a uh, VMware Cloud Applications Marketplace. So that's an interesting thing where uh, folks who are creating LifeRay solutions can actually market those in the market, uh, in, in this marketplace, and launch them in the cloud. I think that's a really new and innovative thing that LifeRay is bringing to the table. Um, they have just recently enabled um, a sync mobile sharing application, uh, both for Android and iOS devices. So that's an ability to synchronize files from your library instance back to your mobile device uh, and do some edits and so on back and forth between the two applications. Um, they have uh, just released the, the, the library faces component, uh, as well as library developer studio, uh, which, which of course adds the visual workload component. Tim's going to spend some time talking about that, so I'll stop there. And um, again, there's a growing adoption of, of LifeRay 6.1, right? 6.1 EE has been out for a short while now. Um, it's the culmination of all of the, the great things that LifeRay has been doing uh, over their, their 11 years of, of developing their product. Um, it's, it's a complete lightweight web platform, of course, lots of new features. Uh, and again, you know, you've probably heard these things before, but if you're not familiar with, with 6.1, I would encourage you to, to take a look and, and consider moving that direction as well. Uh, an important consideration about LifeRay, just, just to kind of cap off what, what we're talking about here, you know, they, they run some real, real big business, as you can see by the list of their customers here. Um, you know, this is not just internal or, or external, right? This is this is actual live running websites for some some well known brands, and, and I would bet you probably have heard of all of the ones on the list here, or almost all of them in any case. So, um, you know, it, it, they're clearly a, a, you know have have well earned that position in the Magic Quadrant list, and uh, and have had a lot of well deserved success. Last thing to say here about LifeRay, and one of the things that we really love about them is, is their flexible integration platform. Right, that not only is the user interface flexible, but the integration uh, com components and capabilities are, are flexible as well. Uh, they, um, you know, it is, it is a core to why we're using LifeRay in our in our business. Uh, why we are are recommending it as a great solution for our customers, and uh, and, and obviously therefore a reason why we're, we're pretty excited about these capabilities. A little bit quickly about who we are at Zia. Um, we're focused on what we are calling the content connection, <laughs> and uh, clearly there is a, a large component of that that is that is focused on on delivery of that, management of of that content, and and portal solutions play an integral role in uh, in, in Making that successful. Um, of, of course, you, you'll you'll see if you look at our website a little bit more about content management as well. We're definitely a, a key component of our business, so we've got some enterprise content management abilities here at Zia mm -hmm. um, and, and some other focuses. But, but the key here with portals is this conversation around integration. Uh, obviously, there's there's a big mobile component there as well in in delivery of, of portal based applications to mobile devices. Um, and then you can't have a conversation, it seems like, these days and not talk about the cloud. So we'll say that we are uh, also offering a managed cloud service, uh, which, is, which is a great way to combine these various technologies and run them in a, in a hosted environment. 
uh, and get some help from, from our team to, to keep you running on a day-to-day -day basis. In, from a from a, uh, a focus perspective, we're we're certainly focused on on um, the, the the major industry verticals uh, and your technology solutions again that that uh, that that are kind of best suit your business, obviously for your organization. Um, the life ray solutions that we're providing um, will typically begin with some some form of an assessment or a discovery. Let's do a little bit of, of learning about what it is you're trying to do and and build up a plan together. Um, work with you perhaps on a pilot or proof of concept, and then and then all the way through, of course, uh, implementation, which brings in back to this this, this integration services um, component, right? That's the big part of, of LifeRay, and so um, with with that, I'll just stop here and say thank you for listening, and that's uh, that's the end of my introduction, and we'll hand it over to Tim. Second to get my notes up. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the top five things we love about LifeRay. Uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, it's open architecture, fast site creation, LifeRay plugins, fast theme development, and responsive layout. Um, when Phil and Ryan asked me to give this talk, I wanted to present on, on the 42 things that I love most about LifeRay, uh, but that would have taken a while. So we're just going to stick with these five. Um, so open architecture, what does that mean? That means that you can use basically any Java application server, any database that's JDBC compliant. So you can leverage your existing investment in your application servers and databases that are already within your enterprise. Um, if you have the flexibility to use any application server, uh, we generally recommend Tomcat because that's the most widely used by the LifeRay community, um, and it has the most bundles that are available for download of that. It's also the um, tends to be the most robust one. Um, you can also use any Java web framework. Um, here are some of the ones that we've used. Uh, the LifeRay MVC was built by LifeRay from the ground up. Um, so it is it is built to uh, to work with portlets specifically. Spring Portlet MVC was created by the Spring community. Um, it's an extension of the Spring MVC framework, which has been around for a while and is quite popular. Um, we use the Spring Portlet MVC for a lot of of our custom portlet development um, because it, it works well and it it has some features that the LifeRay MVC does not. Um, if you look at the LifeRay um, standard plugins that come with LifeRay. Um, a lot of those are built with struts, so that's a handy web framework to know. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to learn in my, uh, in my experience, um, so it's not a big deal if you don't know it. Uh, JSF and GWT are two other common platforms, or, or rather web frameworks, that people are using these days. Um, the, the minor drawback to these are, is that they are not specifically designed to, to work with portlets. Uh, the, port, the portlet uh, life cycle. Okay. Um, so one really cool thing about LifeRay is that you have access to the Enterprise Edition source code. So you can see exactly what's going on under the hood. Um, this is really helpful if you're trying to figure out um, what is actually happening um, or if you run into a problem. Um, on one of my projects we we had a problem where things were not working as documented. Uh, we debugged it. We, we found the, the lines in the source code that where there was a problem. Uh, we provided the lines to LifeRay in, in our uh, trouble ticket, and that enabled them to very quickly um, give us a hotfix uh, so we could patch our environment and keep on running. Uh, if you contrast that with, with a closed source model where you can't look at the source. All you can do is report the problem um, to the vendor. It could take quite a while for them to find and fix the bug, and especially if your environment has lots of uh, customization. And so it might take them quite a while to provide you a fix, leaving you dead in the water for a while. Um, actually, I'm going to go back to this slide for one second. So, um, so open architecture as a whole means that LifeRay is extremely flexible, uh, works great for many different reasons. 
Um, it works well as a, as a social platform if you want to have a wiki and blogs and message boards and so on for your community. Uh, it also works quite well as an integration platform because any Java web framework is going to work with the portal. Um, so you can, uh, you can put in all the common uh, web frameworks, um, uh, all the integration frameworks. On my current project, we integrated with an ERP system, a CRM system, an ESC layer, and multiple web services. Um, and that's not always so easy with other, with other portals. Okay, so uh, one thing that's really great about LifeRay and that coming from a, a background doing Java web application development that I really appreciate is that it's extremely quick to add web pages and you don't need much technical knowledge to do it. Um, so this can help enable the, the content creators in your organization to, um, to get pages up and running. Um, so the basic steps are add a page, choose a layout, add some content to that page, and then set the page permissions. So I'm going to do a quick demo of that. Okay. So here I've got a, a basic LifeRay install that I'm working on. Um, I'm, I'm signed in as the admin. So I'm going to go ahead and add a page. Uh, it's called FAQ page. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to that page. It's blank right now. Um, the default page layout in LifeRay is a two-column layout, as you can see here. I just want one column. I want to have all the real estate available. Okay. Um, and then we need some content for the web page. So I'm going to go into the control panel. In web content, I'm going to add a new piece of web content. I call it FAQ. And for right now, I'm just going to put in question and answer uh, prompts. Let's go ahead and save that and actually publish it. Okay. So if we go back to the portal, I'm on my FAQ page. So let's add the web content display portlet. This is an extremely useful portlet um, that you're going to use a lot of places in your website in your portal. So once you've added it to a page, you just need to configure it and specify what you want it to display. So here's the piece of FAQ content that I just created. I'm going to select that, save. So here I've got the, the content that I entered. It's pretty minimal. So we can modify that. Um, and we can put in our first question. So how long does it take to add a web page to a portal, to a web app? Um, about two minutes if you're using LifeRay. Uh, it takes much longer for a traditional web app, um, especially with the next step, which I'm going to show you. So let's publish that content. So right now, this page is available to everyone. But what if you want your FAQ to only be visible to uh, a select community? Um, we can set permissions for the page. Here's the FAQ page that I added. Select the page, choose permissions. By default, all pages have, are viewable by everyone. So we're going to remove that. And we're just going to make this page visible by authenticated users. Okay. Go back to LifeRay. Okay, so I'm logged in right now as an admin. Um, and I can see the page. I can even uh, refresh, and I can still see the page. If I sign out, though, you'll notice that the FAQ is no longer available. Sign back in, and I can see it. Um, one other really cool feature about LifeRay, um, it, it comes with navigation widgets. So you notice that I didn't specifically add the FAQ to, um, to my navigation item here. Um, it just automatically happens. Um, 
but you also have the ability to prevent that. So, for instance, if I if I go back to um, managing the page, if I specify it as hidden, what that really means is don't show it in the navigation, but people allow people to still navigate to it. So now it's immediately gone from the uh, from the navigation. So I'm going to undo that and add it back in. Okay. Um, another, sorry, back here. Okay. Um, another thing to notice that by default, um, the web pages have friendly URLs. Um, it's very easy to customize this to be whatever you want, either within LifeRay or if you want to have Apache web server and do some URL rewriting on top of LifeRay, you can do that also. So very quickly, we created a page here um, with some content. So you can imagine that when you're starting a project it's, um, and you're trying to figure out how you're going to use the portal, it could be very quick to mock up an entire site uh, just using static content and pages uh, and the web content display portlet um, so that you can very quickly show something to the stakeholders on your project and, and help them figure out the best way for the, the enterprise to use LifeRay. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my slides. Okay, so I showed you the four items I mentioned there. So uh, the LifeRay CMS, the, the content management system, um, is extremely powerful. It has three basic types of data that it stores. Um, one is images, another is documents, and the third is web content, which we just went over. Um, but sometimes you want your content to include images. Um, and frequently you're going to have pages that have, um, have common elements. So a good example of this is an FAQ page where you can have lots of questions and answers. Um, or if you have a, a page containing the info on the management team, you might have a picture of each person, their title, uh, and then a, a quick biography. Um, so that's a perfect example of, of when a, a, clump, a complex bit of web content is going to be useful. Like I mentioned, the, the image galleries for storing images, um, the images are organized in a folder structure just like they would be on your computer. Um, the web content can be very simple snippets of content like the question and answer I created, or they can be uh, organized using structures and then displayed using templates. Um, and, and one more thing I'll show is the, uh, the sitemap tool in, in LifeRay, which is extremely useful. So going back here to uh, a portlet, that, or rather a, a, um, a portal that we're working on right now, I'm logged in as an admin. If I go to the control panel and look in web content, um, you'll notice that there are, beyond the pieces of web content, there are some other tabs up here. There's structures. So what I was just describing is is defined by the image title description structure. And this is to a, a data struct if you're a programmer. Um, what this means is we're creating a, a piece of web content that, that contains an image, it has a title, and it has a description. Um, so you can enter pieces of that content uh, as long as they have those three things. And along with a structure, you need a template that that specifies how you're going to display this information. Um, so for instance, um, we can have what we call a two column left picture, which is basically like the slide I was showing you where you have an image on the left and the, the code for that looks like this. Um, we're, we're using uh, good HTML practices, we're separating our, our, our style um, which can be in here or it could be part of a theme or it could be defined for a page. We're separating our style from the information. Um, so we're basically saying we're going to have a, a div that contains an image and then a div that contains the, um, the description and the title.
So as an example of that, let's go back here. So if you look at the Contact Us page, here we've got the image on the left, which is coming out of the image library, um, and then the title and description on the right that are coming from the web content system. And Liferay does this, this for you. This is very easy to get up and running. Um, I showed you a demo where I had a, uh, a very simple FAQ, but when you've got lots of questions and answers, it's much easier if you're, if you're using a structure to enter them and a template to display them. Uh, so here our template just said, just said, put each question and answer one on top of another. Um, and as, as you add new questions and answers, you don't have to worry about um, how they're going to display it. They're just going to keep getting added to this page. I also mentioned the sitemap tool. So you can see here on the left, as you add pages to Liferay, it builds out a sitemap for you, which is extremely useful. If, if you're building your own Java web application from scratch, or any web application from scratch, it can be difficult to remember um, all the pages, the hierarchy of which pages have subpages, um, which pages are, are visible to, um, to everyone, which pages are in the navigation, um, uh, whether a page requires authentication. And the sitemap tool is a very convenient way to, to find that information. Okay. All right, so back to the slides. So Liferay comes with a bunch of standard plugins. Um, this is another really useful feature of Liferay, so that you don't have to spend time reinventing the wheel. The, the common functionality that, that you're going to need is most likely already part of the product, um, or can be uh, added without much effort. Um, so I showed you the web content display portlet. Uh, it's probably the most widely used portlet on most uh, Liferay portals. Um, I'm going to show you the sign-in portlet in a bit, which is more than just creating accounts and allowing login. It also handles the uh, forgot password feature, which users inevitably forget their password. Uh, I mentioned um, social media features, um, such as wiki, message board, blog, chat. Um, and then Web Proxy is uh, another extremely useful plugin. Most enterprises have websites that, you know, legacy websites that they need to um, continue to take advantage of, um, but maybe they don't want to do a lot of maintenance on them anymore. The web proxy portlet makes it easy to, um, to surface, to, to give visibility to other web applications within your enterprise uh, through the portal. So it's all managed in the same way. So I'll give you a quick demo of some of these. So I go back here. Um, so I'm going to go back to the welcome page. Adding a portlet, uh, as you saw before, with the web content display, it's extremely quick and easy. Uh, if I want to add my wiki portlet, bam, it's on the page. Um, I can also move it around on the page. Uh, if you recall, Liferay comes standard with a two-column layout, um, split 30 and 70%. Um, so that's what this page is using here and you can just drag and drop the portlets where you want them. You can also specify the, some uh, parameters on the portlet itself um, to specify how they, how mul if you have a page with multiple portlets, how they should appear on the page. So let's say um, your company buys a um, small up-and-coming um, e-commerce site, and you need to, uh, where did I put that? It. Yep. So let's say your company buys a small up-and-coming um, e-commerce site, and you want to expose that e-commerce site through your portal. It's as simple as doing this. Okay. So there you go. So there's our, our legacy web app. Um, it's hideous. We wouldn't want to maintain this. Uh, but we can expose it through our portal here. 
I'm actually a huge fan of Amazon, so Amazon lawyers, don't sue me, please. <laughs> um, okay, go back to, and you can also style this and, and control how much uh, real estate it takes on the page and, and uh, customize it in lots of ways. Okay, so that was the web proxy portlet. Um, one more thing, there, there are some, uh, some gotchas with the web proxy portlet. Um, some websites, um, Amazon is actually one, will not let you proxy their site um, once authentication is required. Um, so you, what that means to you is you have to have control over the source. Um, you, you may need to modify the web application um, in order for it to be able to be viewed in the portal. Um, if the existing web application has restrictions like that, that, that it prevents the use of proxies, um, you have to remove that. Most web applications do not have restrictions like that, so, you, so you're going to be fine. Okay, so uh, we, we looked at a list of library plugins. Um, these are all modifiable. Um, there are several ways to do this. Um, one option is you can just use configuration to change the behavior of portlets. Um, so for example, uh, if we go back to our control panel and we go down to server integration um, and click the, the CAPTCHA tab, changing the, the registration process to use CAPTCHA is as simple as clicking the box and then entering your CAPTCHA public and private key. So in, in five minutes you can be using reCAPTCHA. Um, writing the code to do this takes much, much longer. Oh, actually, I'm going to, I need to undo that change. Okay, good. Yeah, and it didn't hit save. That's not saved. Okay, so that's a very quick example of how you can use configuration to control the behavior of plugins very quickly. Um, there's also the, the portal EXT properties. Um, there are lots and lots of, of properties that are overridable. Um, uh, by using that file. Okay, so but what if um, configuration changes alone are not enough to, to get to the level of customization you're looking for? Um, Liferay has a mechanism known as a hook which allows you to override basically everything within one of their standard plugins, uh, standard portlets. Uh, you can change JSPs, uh, you can change struct classes, you can change the CSS, um, you can customize uh, the pages, for example, changing the, the page flow. Uh, and you can also change the behavior. Uh, Zia has done extensive customization of Liferay portlets using hooks. Uh, a great example of this is the sign-in portlet. Um, virtually every enterprise wants to customize the, the login and, and cre account creation process, um, kind of make it their own, um, put in their, their own uh, look and feel, um, and have different pages. Um, so we've done that for our clients. Um, in the user, at the user interface level, you can change the page flow, look and feel. You can um, you can have the the company specific terms and conditions document that a user agrees to. Um, and as I showed, you can also configure uh, to use reCAPTCHA instead of the built-in Liferay CAPTCHA. Um, on the back end, uh, it's very easy to to use the hook to integrate with. Uh, whatever you need to integrate with. So um, in our case, ERP system, um, this could be um, uh, any kind of web service integration. You can integrate with LDAP for authentication. Uh, basically, the sky's the limit. Anything you can, you can accomplish with Java code, you can, um, you can integrate into your hook. So I'll give you a quick uh, demo um, showing you what we've done with the sign-in portlet. I'm going to go ahead and log out as an admin. Okay. Um, my, <laughs> my sign in portly got pushed all the way to the bottom of the page. Um, so this is the basic sign in portlet functionality and, and look and feel here. Um, you can either log in or you can create an account. Um, one really nice feature is that you can use OpenID. So if you don't want to force a user to create a, a uh, username and password, 
you can just take advantage of one, that, one of their existing credentials that already uses OpenID. Um, sometimes users are, are uh, disinclined to um, create an, a username and password for a site. It's just one more, uh, one more hurdle. Um, and if you can allow them to, uh, to just skip that step, they might be more likely to use your site. So if I want to uh, create a site here, I mean, create an account, Uh, here's the standard CAPTCHA verification that comes with LifeRay. Okay. So you notice that the default behavior of the sign-in portlet is that uh, it shows you your password here, and then it also uh, emails your password to you. Um, some companies don't like to display the password on the screen. They just want it emailed to you. Um, when you log in, um, the next page is, is typically a, a terms and conditions. Um, so to make our lawyers happy, we're going to read every single word on this page. Uh, actually, Phil's telling me don't read every single word on the page. <laughs> okay. Um, next page is uh, security question and answer, so that when the user forgets their password, which they will, uh, they can recover it themselves without troubling you. Okay. So now you notice uh, I'm signed in with the account I just created. Um, so that was the, the registration flow for the standard uh, LifeRay sign-in portlet. So let's take a look. Let's contrast that with what we've done uh, for our client. Uh, so you notice that the look and feel is different. Um, we've, we've styled the buttons and, and the fields. Um, uh, we, we've added a, a four-step uh, banner at the top here to let the user know where they are in the process. Uh, you'll notice the recaptcha uh, that I talked about instead of the kind of lame uh, default captcha. Okay. So now we're on step two of the process. Uh, you'll notice that this does not ex display the, the password on the, on the page. Uh, rather, the, the password is emailed to me. So I'm going to go to my email, grab that out, Type that in here. Okay. Uh, here's another long terms and conditions. We're going to say, yep, I agree. And then uh, I'm going to be forced to enter a new password here. This is another difference. Uh, this is a configuration item. Uh, it's just, I think it's a simple checkbox or a simple property you put into your properties file that says, yes, force the user to, um, to set a new password when they create an account. Um, actually, it is in control panel. So I'm going to create a new account, or a new password, I mean. Okay. Security question and answer again. Um, you'll notice we, we've also added uh, added text in here. This is coming from actually all everything on here is coming from the web content system. So that if someone in the company wants decides that that needs to change, it's not a it's not as complicated as finding the JSP source file and changing it there, or finding a resource bundle and changing it there. It's as simple as log into the portal as a as someone who has authority to change web content and make the change and publish it. And it's up and running. Okay. And then you're automatically signed in. 
We've also configured the, the landing page for authenticated users uh, instead of it just being the home page. So that's a, a quick demo of, of the level of customization that you can, can do to the sign-in portlet. It's, it's pretty extensive um, and doesn't take that much time once you know what you're doing. Okay, so how do you make a, a portal look uh, the way that your company wants it to look? Um, most of the styling is done with a theme in Liferay. Right? Um, this is common to a lot of different portal tools. Uh, I think Liferay is easier than, than most. Um, you know, the, the out of the box feel for Liferay is okay. It, it might be fine for a strictly internal portal. Uh, but if it's going to be for public use or for a large number of users, you're probably going to want to customize it. Um, so you can customize the look and feel. Um, and the, the basic technologies involved are velocity, um, HTML, CSS, and images. So to recap real, quick, real quickly, um, here's the basic. Um, this is the, the default theme, the, the classic theme that comes with Liferay. And here is the theme um, that we did for one of our clients. Uh, the theme basically controls, at least for this, in, for this website, the theme basically controls the, the header, the, the top part of the page here, and the, the footer, the bottom part of the page. The, the stuff in the middle is generally um, content, excuse me, content that is coming from uh, a portlet whether that's a web content display portlet or a custom portlet or, or another standard library portlet. One interesting thing that we did um, is we have the client requested that the left-hand navigation for some of the pages. Uh, so this is handled through the theme. Uh, using velocity conditional logic to, to control um, to control the, the left nav bar here. You can see that I'm on my account page and my account is highlighted. If I go to the my products page, my, my products is, is then highlighted. Okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is responsive layout. Um, it's one of the one of the major trends that's happening in the web world. Um, you know, a few years ago, everybody was was all about AJAX. Um, the next major trend that, that is happening now is making a website that works well for any web-enabled device. Um, most websites are, are designed for desktop computers. Period. That's it. And they may or may not work OK on other devices. Um, if you look at the adoption rates of tablets, such as the iPad, uh, they're, they're growing extremely quickly. Uh, and in the next couple of years, a, a majority of, of home users, re residential users, are going to be connecting to the internet using a tablet rather than a desktop computer, at least part of the time. So designing your site for tablet or for phones just makes sense. Um, it means that the site is going to be relevant for much longer, so it decreases the, the total cost um, over the length of the project. It um, means that you won't have to be rebuilding your portal in, in two years. Um, and the way that Liferay does this is um, it uses CSS media queries and JavaScript to basically detect the, the screen width of a given device, whether that's a phone, a tablet, or, or a computer. Um, what you have to do is you have to specify the, how the CSS um, should render the, the portal page for each of those display sizes. Um, so the, the best example of, of the um, responsive layout is actually the liferay.com uh, site itself. Um, so you notice this, this is meant for desktop width. As I resize this page, it changes for tablet width, and then eventually for phone width. Um, and 
most of the information is still here. Uh, a good best practice, or rather, a best practice is to have all, all the all the content on on your phone um, that you would see on the the regular page, but just decrease the size of things. So you notice that some of the huge images um, have been greatly decreased in size or or possibly gone, but um, all the menu items are here. Um, all the content is here. So I encourage you to try this uh, at home um, with your tablets and phones. Go to liferay.com site and, and see just how well it's implemented. Uh, and realize that with Liferay, um, it's as simple as specifying the, the CSS for, the, for your pages uh, for each of the devices that you want to support. Um, it, it breaks um, it breaks devices down into four different uh, size categories. And so you, you just need to provide CSS for those four categories, and you're off and running. OK. So um, like I said, there are lots of things I love about Liferay, and I wanted to talk about a lot more. Um, we basically narrowed it down to five. Um, but here's a, here's a couple more I'm sneaking in. Um, version 6.1. Um, has has a lot of really nice features. Um, one that that we are extremely looking forward to using is the out of the box support for previewing PDF and Word documents. Um, in in older versions of Liferay, if you have a Word document such as your terms and conditions that comes from your legal group, and you want to display that in your portal, you have to convert that Word doc to HTML, and then you have to style it uh, appropriately for your portal. Um, that can consume a lot of time, um, and you you run the risk of of running into bugs with uh, browser specific versions. For example, uh, for one client, we we converted the terms and conditions um, into HTML, and found out that it does not render correctly on IE in one particular case because there's a bug that's been in IE for about two years that they just won't fix that has to deal with unordered lists. Um, so once we go to 6.1. That whole headache is, is eliminated. You can just have uh, your Word doc or your PDF uh, displayed on the page. Uh, Zia has a, a major Alfresco practice, um, and Liferay has integration with Alfresco. So this is an area that uh, where we can provide a lot of benefit to our clients. So that's uh, that's the end of my presentation. Great. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Shout out to Peyton Manning. <laughs> At this point, we'll open it up for questions, so please feel free to type them into the chat function on your GoToWebinar dashboard. Uh, we've also been joined by Phil Robinson, who's the Senior Vice President of Business Development here at Zia. Um, we do have a question for him. Uh, Phil, can you talk a little bit more about Zia Managed Cloud and the offerings in the marketplace? Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks again to everybody for uh, attending the webinar and, and sticking around. Looks like everybody um, to a person stayed through the whole presentation. So um, definitely uh, uh, thanks to Tim for putting this together, and hopefully that was some useful information. So um, yeah, the Zia Managed Cloud. Um, Ryan didn't have a lot of time to get into it because we wanted to give give Tim plenty of time to present. But um, really, the concept here is is a little different from from what's out there today. So um, in my background, I've done a lot of work with um, the cloud providers, and, and again, right, this could be could be Amazon, it could be um, you know Rackspace slash OpenStack, right? So hosting slash cloud providers, um, and obviously now you're starting to see more and more of these cloud template providers, right, and cloud marketplaces. And I know LifeRay's done some work with Bitnami. Um, the concept here is a little different. What we've heard from people is is um, you know, it's great that those are out there, and 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 absolutely, they're they're growing massively. But um, you know, what we're really looking for is someone to help us with our application, right? So this goes back to sort of the old days of, of managed application services, application support and maintenance, and so that's really the concept behind the Zia Managed Cloud is that. Um, you know, it, it's actually somewhat um, infrastructure agnostic. We don't really care where you want it put. Um, what we're going to do is, is is help you really manage it, right? So that's get it set up, um, get it installed, get it configured, get it customized, do the integration work um, that that you need done, and, and really manage that for you. And again, that came, has come on the back of of multiple requests we've got from people saying, "Look, um, you know, again, we really need you to manage this application for us." Great, thanks. 
Um, Ryan, I've also mentioned do you have focus in specific vertical areas? So can you talk a bit more about that and where you see activity with the LifeRight portal? Yeah, so again, um, you know, we had a, a quick slide that Ryan just ran through. Um, and, um, and and so happy to expand on that a little bit more. So, yeah, at, at, at Zia, um, I think like like many companies, right? Um, you know, we we we've, we've seen and done work um, across a wide variety of, of horizontal areas, right? So we do a lot of work with LifeRay. We do a lot of work with um, Alfresco. We do a lot of work with ESB technologies like MuleSoft. Um, but the reality is, people are looking to to solve business problems, right? They're looking for for business value out of out of using the content. And so, um, you know, more and more, we're targeting um, you know really specific use cases and vertical solutions. So. Um, you know, at, at Zia Financial Services is a, is a big practice for us. Um, public sector is a big practice for us. Education, um, technology and telco, um, construction, oil and gas, they're all big areas for us. Um, specifically to LifeRay, where, where we've really seen a lot of use um, in our area. And I know LifeRay is used very broadly, um, but, but certainly, again, within the sort of technology and, and, and telco space, um, that's obviously the big project that, that Tim was referencing with some of these demonstrations. Um, definitely public sector, um, so number of um, state and local governments using LifeRay. So those are two really big areas. But again, I mean, it certainly wouldn't, wouldn't limit, limit it to that, and, and we definitely do see um, sort of broad-based portal and, and web publishing um, use cases. Great. Another question here, and this might require a, a more in-depth offline conversation, but um, does Zia undertake small projects or uh, only large ones? Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll start that, and, and it looks like there's a second part, such as the registration process you demoed um, and, and what's that cost. And I think, um, so thanks for the question, and, and probably we'll take some of that offline with you. Um, but, but the answer is, um, in effect, every project we do starts as a pro small project, right? So, um, you know, we, we, we typically um, will start with an assessment um, with you. Now, that may be part of sort of a larger agreement, right? But, um, but, it, but it always does start small. Um, not sure about the specific registration process, Tim, if that's something that is, is sort of carve outable or not. And again, maybe we could take this offline unless you want to add any comments to that. Yeah, I can speak to that. So okay. um, it, it all depends um, on how extensive uh, the customizations are that you want done to the registration process. Uh, you know, for example, you can literally just uh, use CSS to style what library provides out of the box. Um, if you want to change the page flow around, um, maybe add in some, some custom steps, maybe there's, there's additional uh, demographic data that, that you want to capture somewhere in the registration process. Um, it, it, it really just depends, like with any web application, um, how w what you want to do. And so Phil mentioned uh, starting off a project with an assessment phase, and, and that helps us understand the client's needs, figure out what you really want, you know, and, and help you work within your budget to, to achieve what you're looking for.